Hello and welcome to the Fisher Random channel on YouTube. In this video I'm going to present another game I played recently, a live 5 minute game played on Chess Cube. As I said before, I'm not claiming to be a world renowned expert on Fisher Random. Actually this is my, only my second live game and I've played less than a dozen games of Fisher Random chess overall. I'm using Fisher Random as a way to hopefully improve my calculation ability and um, my ability to look for tactics um, such as forks, pins and skewers, that kind of thing. And uh, I also believe that um, Fisher Random is definitely worth exploring. If you understand standard chess, it's uh, pretty simple to pick up the rules and um, I hope that these videos will serve to encourage others to explore the game. So just for the purpose of completeness, um, let's take a quick look at the starting position. I was playing white and once again this was a five minute game played on chess cube. So as with all Fisher Random starting positions, you can see that the king is in between the two rooks. In this particular case my rooks are on a1 and g1. The other consideration is in all Fisher Random positions there must be one light square and one dark square bishop and here we can see those on b1 and c1. And again as usual the black pieces mirror those of white so it's a complete mirror image. Um, my opponent was rated a couple of hundred points higher than me and as I said this is my second game. So I begin with b3 and here I'm really looking to Fianchetto the bishop and perhaps play c4 and really open up these bishops. Um, bishops can be incredibly powerful in the opening and I was particularly keen to get my dark square bishop on b2 because it points very nicely um, towards the unsuspecting black queen. So if my opponent is careless, doesn't calculate correctly, then um, that could be a very, very unfortunate tactic if they miss it. So e5, bishop b2, f6, c4. And just to compare and contrast uh, my opening moves with, with black, um, what I've tried to do is give my bishops scope and also increase the chances of me castling early in the game. Um, so my two bishops are now exercising influence control over the diagonals and whilst my dark square bishop is blunted for the moment, um, this could open up in the long term. In contrast, black has really not done too much in terms of giving their pieces scope, although in the defence the pawns do control more centre squares than mine. So this game continues. g5, knight d3, knight g6, knight e3. And again I'm just trying to centralise these pieces. Um, these aren't necessarily ideal positions for the knights, um, but it also offers me the scope to perhaps castle A side or H side if I continue to develop. I'm just keen to get pieces out. D6, Bishop C2, F5. And here I'm starting to see that my opponent's spending an awful lot of time moving pawns and uh, my bishop on b2 is still pointing very nicely at the unsuspecting queen on h8 and I'm starting to look for tactical opportunities uh, perhaps to sacrifice a piece or something to open this diagonal. Knight d5 just moves the knight to a, a very central square. e4 is um, pretty much suicide because whilst they 
uh, are attacking my knight. They've opened up this lovely diagonal. And as I said in earlier videos, bishops can be absolutely devastating in Fisher Random Chess um, if you don't consider the possibilities. And of course, here we see what can happen. So my opponent didn't resign. Uh, they can they recaptured, and I played knight b to d2. And here I'm just looking to consolidate the position um, and really exchange pieces and force victory. So f4 once again they're, they're not developing pieces, um, so I just snap off this pawn. They play c6, and I retreat the knight d5 and um, bearing in mind this person is ranked a couple of hundred points higher than me uh, in F Fisher Random um, I'm not really convinced by their opening uh, strategy of just moving pawns C takes D5 C5 G3 and here I'm uh, looking to create a potential battery um, on the B7 square to potentially win this rook if they um, fail to consider my, the power of my bishops for the second time in one game. Knight f6 and I castle. Just going back here, uh, this obviously um, isn't particularly useful to explain the differences in Fisher Random Castle castling, since it looks very similar to normal castling. So once again I will prepare a video on that. Okay, so how did this game continue? As follows. D6, and I'm just, um, well, just seeing how tactically the way they are. Um, they've missed the impact of bishops before, so maybe they'll do so again. This time they do spot it. I recapture with the queen, and uh, they finally bring out uh, one of their pieces, developing their bishop to E6. I take the advantage of snapping off that pawn and another pawn. I play d3, check with the goal of just centralizing the queen. Um, here, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the position. I have my rook on the d file opposite the king, and, um, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the position. So c4, and they actually help me increase the uh, the influence of this rook by opening up the d file. Here I have almost so many opportunities um, to uh, for sacrifices for for checks that I actually miss uh, a very simple capture. Uh, the rook on a8 is of course hanging. I just decide to um, sack the exchange, check, and I've, I've still missed, uh, I missed it for a second time, the rook, um, but I win that rook, king b1, and here, well, instead of doing the honourable thing and resigning, my opponent just... Uh, really commit suicide with all their pieces. Um, not really sure why people do this. So the rest of the game I'll just run through without commentary. Um, but it, it's a pretty quick finish. Uh, they don't try and defend or anything. So the game con concluded as follows. And here a very simple checkmate. They've actually you know, done the work for me. So the game ends in checkmate. So um, I hope this was uh, an interesting insight into the wonderful world of, of Fisher Random Chess. Um, I hope it once again demonstrates that the central principles of, of chess seem to be um, very closely aligned also in uh, Fisher Random Chess in terms of one should focus on developing pieces, which in turn um, can be
be more central and apply control in the center as opposed to just pushing pawns. We saw my opponent's downfall uh, was partly due to the fact that they just made pawn move after pawn move. And once again, something I've said before, which is the the um, the power of the of the bishops, particularly in the first few moves, should not be underestimated. It really is worthwhile investing time, considering where your opponent's bishops are and where they where they may be upon the next move. Um, particularly because there can be vulnerable pieces and vulnerable squares early on in the game. So if you found this video entertaining in any way, please consider subscribing. Uh, if you'd like more information, then please visit fisherrandom.com and you can also find us on Twitter and Facebook. And as always, thanks very much for your time and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks very much.